Where I believe dealers should focus is how to control your own data. You know, how to, and it, this is not about going out and ripping it out of the hands of all of the partners and tools and systems you use, because that's not gonna help. No, that's just gonna hurt you in the short term. But it's really to start to recognize and understand where is all my information? How can I have a view into all that information? Mm -hmm. And then how can I use this to automate and make my communications and interactions with my consumer, with my buyers smarter? So when you have centralized all that data, your chats, like what you get, yeah. like all the interactions that are happening, just get better, it gets more relevant. Welcome to the Strategy with Jason podcast. Tune in for everything you need to know to stay in the know regarding the automotive industry. Here's your host, Jason Harris. Hey, 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 what's going on, Podcast Nation? It is Jason Harris here, and thank you for joining me on another episode of The Drive, Las Vegas edition. We're here at Digital Dealer, Las Vegas, Nevada. And I have an amazing guest with me, the one, the only, the oh so famous <laughs> a tool with the Orbeez. What's going on, man? What's up, man? How you doing? This is an experience. I see this kind of stuff on YouTube, right? And <laughs> I'm like, I'm never going to be there. But yeah. you just oh, made me feel on. like a celebrity. This wow. is awesome. You are famous. I think every, everyone might think that on the road here <laughs> the in Vegas. Road here might. <laughs> well, uh, Twelfth Man, really, thank you for taking the time to jam with me. And I really, you. really appreciate it. Um, for everybody out there who, you know, you know, don't know about you or, you know, kind of how you guys started your background, uh, I always like kicking off these podcasts with a little origin story. A, because I believe no one just wakes up one day and goes, yeah, automotive, <laughs> that's where I'm going to build a business. Um, so let's let's kick that off. Like, how did you just get started with automotive? You know what? Um, I actually had recently, I had sold one of my startups and I was just doing the entrepreneur circuit, mm -hmm. talking at startup events, you know, giving advice. And I ran into my co-founder and he was coming out of a project with Cox Automotive at Bain Consulting. Uh -huh. And he was talking about this industry and I started really g getting into it. And over the course of the last five years, the, the company evolved, the, the product evolved. And I feel like the way I've gotten into it is very organically, very, yep. and, and what we're doing today is not what we set out to do in the beginning. <laughs> is that fact, how it works? Yeah, absolutely. Those are the best startups because it's sort of, you know, it's deep in your DNA, you're evolving. Yes. So you, you got bit by the automotive bug. I yeah. did, I did. Here's <laughs> yeah, I am. You know, I was telling uh, Mindy Holman, who uh, one of our investors is Holman, and Mindy uh, is, uh, you know, uh, sort of in the family. And I was telling her how my dad used to make us, we used to be have subscriptions to Newsweek, Time, and so forth, you know, back then when I was young. Yep. And he would actually ask us to write up about different ads inside of the Newsweek. So you'd rip the ad and you'd sort of write about it. You know, like maybe that, that was my cool. dad's way. I got to thank him for this. <laughs> and usually I would write about car ads because there was always that beautiful car ad, you know, the headlights. It evokes view. emotion, yeah. lifestyle. Yeah, no, I'm totally. Absolutely. I got Alcohol sucked into that and, way and yes. cars. Isn't that funny how <laughs> those were like a lot of the magazine ads? But, you know, and, and also I remember my dad looking at the Sunday newspaper, do you remember that? At the mm -hmm. back were all the sales, yes. you know, offers. And we wouldn't be in the market to buy a car, but it was a way to understand what's happening in the economy. Mm -hmm. So the auto industry is at the core of the, of America. I it it really that. is. And that's, that's kind of something I tell my kids all the time is like, cars are here to stay no matter what's <laughs> running in them. <laughs> yeah. If no they're matter. flying. Yeah. It doesn't matter. None of it's uh, overpowered V8s or electric motors. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, man, let's. Let, there's so many cool things going on with you and Orby, and you know, I, I I think just some of the strategies and the processes that you're pushing dealerships to develop, I think, is just really cool. So let's let let's let's go down let's go down that rabbit hole yep. of of strategy. You know what? You know, I, I think we're in an interesting time right now with the automotive industry because I think we're having a, an opportunity to kind of reinvent yes. some of our strategies. Yes. And I'd love to kind of get your thoughts on that. Yeah. So this reinvention is being almost forced onto this mm -hmm. industry, right? Yes. Whether it was because of COVID changing patterns 
or sort of the dynamics with OEMs and direct to consumer, the EV business, mm -hmm. just a lot of changes. Lots. And and I think what it's doing for dealerships, both large and small, you know, from the large groups to the smaller ones uh, and individual rooftops, is rethinking the longevity of the business to figure out, okay, if I am I in it for the long haul, and if I am then what are the things that I need to do now that may not be instant gratification, mm -hmm. right? Not the lead today, but rather, what can I do now to build those long lasting relationships, to build my customer database, to build those journeys and follow that consumer through, throughout their buying cycle. Some people will buy a car within days. Some people might take months or years. Yeah. And dealers need to start to recognize that, especially if they're in it for the long game. Well, I, I'm glad that you bring that up because I have described um, our, our marketing strategies as, as more of marathons. Now, mm -hmm. you can tell by this amazing physique that I have that I've never run a marathon. <laughs> Don't worry, I, hey, I'm, I'm slim and, and I haven't either. So, <laughs> But I have talked to a lot of people that have. And, mm -hmm. you know, the success of running a marathon is finding a pace. Yeah. A pace that you can consistently execute on. And ideas are only as good as how well we can execute them. So, you know, everyone asks me, Jason, what's the, what's the best strategy? What's the best? I said, it's a strategy that you can execute. Yes. That's, that's the strategy. Great, that's great, man. Well, I it, like that. But, but, but we have to start somewhere. Yeah. So, you know, what would be maybe some of the first few things that you would advise a dealership to start in kind of this reinvention process? Yeah, so I, I think there's a lot of things, right? Even here at Digital Dealer, I, I feel every vendor has something uh, different to add, value to add to the dealership. Where, where I believe dealers should focus is how to control your own data. You know, how to, and it, this is not about going out and ripping it out of the hands of all of the partners and tools and systems you use, because that's not going to help. No. That's just going to hurt you in the short term. But it's really to start to recognize and understand where is all my information? How can I have a view into all that information? Mm -hmm. And then how can I use this to automate and make my communications and interactions with my consumer, with my buyers, smarter. So when you have centralized all that data, your chats, like what you get, yeah. like all the interactions that are happening, just get better. It gets more relevant. Well, you're optimizing it. You're, you're optimizing. You're, you're, you have the data that you can effectively make changes. All right, for the better. Absolutely. And so you have to have at least a view into all that data. So if there's an iframe. You know, sorry to go technical here. No, no, but no. But I, I can. T I, I got a bums of attention. With actually, this all day long. Th this digital <laughs> dealer. There's a lot of talk like this. Oh, was it's there? Not, okay, well, that's know. good. Yeah. So whether it's an iframe or a custom widget, or you go off site, you should have visibility into all of those places so that you have a single view of that customer, and then what you do with that data is really the next big opportunity. And that's yes. where, you know, Matador, a, a lot of companies come in to be able to take that intelligence and say, wow, I could actually interact with way more relevance. Right. Now, now let's deep dive, <clears throat> well, actually let's go down this rabbit hole because I like this rabbit hole because I don't think maybe some of the people that are watching and listening know, you know why we're, why, when we're talking about iframes and we're talking about digital widgets that have pop-ups, it's, it's, it's the URL. All right. Yeah. It's, it, the problem is, is that we're trying to track that customer's journey and optimize a customer's journey, but there's issues with those iframes and those pops ups. And let's let's go down that route. Yeah. So up. if the pop up was on your own website domain, right? So say you're on uh, BestBuy.com and the pop up mm -hmm. is a BestBuy.com, you know, frame, it just happens to be loading a different page on that page, and it, it makes a lot of sense to do that many times, yes. right? That is not a problem because it's the same domain. We're able to track that journey. Exactly. But when it's a separate domain, you know, um, Jason, like a, a while ago, um, you know, what we're dealing with cookies, there was another <laughs> problem. It was called cross domain, okay? Ah. So if people Google cross domain issues, this was years ago when the browsers all agreed to make it harder from one for one URL to read from a different URL. It was mm -hmm. a safety issue. Yeah. I mean, imagine you're on a website and a pop-up loaded and it's like sucking out everything you're doing. And so the, the, all the browsers, 
everything that you know even when you hear about chrome like and the cookies right we we see them keep pushing it back <laughs> yeah. it's because it's harder cookies are so embedded but cross domain iframes were forced to be cut off from communication so now anytime you have a third party iframe you're losing visibility yes and uh, some of the most popular ones i see out there are usually credit trade-ins th those yep. seem to be chat the two, chat th those yes those three seem to be kind of the the biggest culprits yeah and by the way iframes don't have to be colored like you can have invisible areas to the iframe so it looks like it's embedded yes it <laughs> looks like the chat program is right there in the page but when you right click around borders you'll see view uh, view view frame source 100 and if we can't track that data you know use Credit, for example, um, mm -hmm. or even trade-ins, right? Like, if, if I'm filling out this this trade-in form and I'm putting in my make and my model and my year, and then I just, nah, I yeah, give you up. bailed out. Yeah, I bailed out. Uh, well, because that thing. sits on another domain, I can't take action on that. But if it did sit on my domain, that is data that I can actually make action. Can about. you imagine the marketing messages you can have? if you knew the difference between just visited and never tried to check out and people who tried to check out and either bailed or where they bailed. Did they bail at the credit card? Did they <laughs> exactly. bail because you know we don't offer American Express and maybe that's why they bailed? Did they bail because the shipping cost was too much mm -hmm. and they need free shipping? You know, you've seen those offers. Hey, come back, finish where you left off. Oh yeah, 10 I mean, percent off. everybody experiences this. If you've ever shopped on Amazon, everybody in the world uh, experiences. has experiences because you, you thought about buying something, but then you never really kind of finished that checkout process. But then you got these set of ads like, oh, well, what about, and do you want to come back? You know, and I, I, our industry, I, I think it's an education thing. It's an you know, education I, thing. I, I think dealers yeah. are smart and if they knew, all right, that they're losing out on this journey data yep. and how important it is to make that journey data actionable, yep. then they, they, they would probably say something. They, they, they'd speak up. Yeah, and I, I think also integration. So when you think about what the industry is doing together, we have a lot of data that's now starting to be more openly shared. So when yes. you think about these finance widgets, the first thing was okay, I can't put a script in here because of PCI compliance mm -hmm. or some other security reason. Fair. But how about you fire events, you, you send events that don't have any PII? Yeah. So, so at least we have some pieces. So you're starting to see this with some of the great conversations I've been having with widgets, large and small, that are in the digital retailing tools, uh, and they're firing events, and we're listening to them. Um, and we're building these profiles of users. And so even if we don't know who you are, we know that you got from step one, two, three and bailed, yes. that at one day in the future, if you become known, we'll remember, oh, hey, you're the guy that bailed out. Yes, and as a marketer, how exciting is that? I mean, think about just, you know, at, some of the best marketers out there spend more time defining audiences than they probably do speaking of creative, right? Yep. Because it, it is so important to market to the person, not at the person. But for me to do that, I need to understand those people as much as humanly possible. I mean, being able to give that type of audience back into your marketing strategy. Whew. Oh man, and, 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 and across all channels, market, you know, search and social and chat and email and customizing the website based on yes. that experience. So a lot of, lot of big opportunity i guarantee you the casino business knows how to play this game oh they they know definitely do. everything uh, about what you're doing even if you're not signing up for their m life program or whatnot they've got facial recognition tied to you how much you're spending and so on that's why you could have a gucci store like that look at that well look at that but um another company that i thought <clears throat> grocery stores Oh, yeah. There's a reason why the milk always sits at the back of a grocery store. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. It is <laughs> intentionally designed that way so that you have to pass through, all right, multiple aisles to get it because the, 
data was there. They saw that the customer journey was if we place this back here, yes, all right, that they would add two to three additional items by the time they hit the checkout. And that took the work of that data collection. They also found out that <laughs> if you put candy at the front checkout, that kids will buy it. I don't know if God. that needed that much data though. I don't think it did. I, I think that needed it. like two kids <laughs> to be like, mommy, daddy, buy me, can I have this? <laughs> So that's a that's not data driven. I no, it's not data driven. That's sugar driven. Um, that's sugar driven. But but that's that's just an, that's a really good example of just how taking that customer journey data and making it actionable. And to your point, just even the way we design our website. I mean, I got to be honest with you. I'm not. I don't get overly excited about automotive websites. The fundamentally haven't changed. They haven't changed. And what yeah. we've done, instead of really kind of investing in our shopping experience, we decided to just go straight to a uh, a buying experience. I'm like, wait a second, did we skip a step here? Um, you yes, know? yes. And we have digital retailing. Now, I'm not, I'm not shitting on digital retailing. I think digital retailing is great, you know, but again, two different systems, two different sets of data. I have an idea I want to run by you. Uh, Tell shit. me what you think. So you're right that Auto dealers tend to drive to the SRP, VDP. All those acronyms even feel so cold, right? It's like yep. search results page and vehicle detail page and fill out a form. That what's happening is I've seen some group sites spend time to put in content where mm. the model of the make model has a landing page. Yes. And then it has photos of the grill and the beautiful, you know, it kind of, it doesn't, it doesn't force sell you to story. have to, yeah, sell the story and not have to press the back button and then disappear into an abyss of YouTube videos and <laughs> reviews and OEM websites, right? It, imagine keeping the consumer on your website and providing a little bit more experience, a little bit more information that they don't have to go anywhere else. Which I, I think, it, well, I know, I don't think, because we, we've done this now for many, many dealerships where we build out those types of, yeah. of journey strategies. Um, it, it, it does. It, 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 supports, it doesn't make an impact. It makes an impact. It, it makes an impact in the form fills. Now, I, I could talk about form fills all day long. How much <laughs> I freaking hate those. Um, I do. I Forms do. I, are I, here. I know. I know you guys are like uh, uh, of the new <laughs> sort of model. I think it's going to be a mix of two. Well, you know what it is? Here's the problem. It's not maybe that I hate forms. It's what maybe our industry or CRMs have done with forms. Yes. Right? And how long it takes. That <sighs> form disappears Gosh. into a CRM and you never know. It's not asynchronous, right? Oh, you don't exactly. you don't expect it. And, uh, but I will tell you, my first startup was for mortgage companies. It yep. was a lead management system okay. called Lead ROI for mortgage companies. And we had leads coming in from Lower My Bills, Next Tag, Lending Tree. And within 30 seconds, I mean, the lead was posted, routed to the right loan officer, and progressively dialed there in 30 seconds. So see, if now, this see, industry that, I got there, I would absolutely. be comfortable with that. You know, it's just, I think right now, even consumers have been kind of desensitized to it that, you know, okay, I'm going to fill out this form. You're going to ask me for my first name, last name, email address, blood si blood type, yeah. shoe size, and firstborn. Yep. Just so that in, in, in within a few 10 or 15 minutes, I'm gonna get an autoresponder from your CRM, thanking me for my time, but not respecting my time. Yes. And then letting me know that uh, we'll get back to you whenever the hell it's convenient for us, not when it's convenient That's for you. That's the bummer. Now, <laughs> you've seen these things where it's like, call me now, customer service, right? Uh, uh, Amazon, yes. Walmart. Those are in a way a form because you've filled out, hey, I need help. And the button says, call me now or submit by email. Yes, I like that. The is call that... me now is a call right away. Yes. We couldn't, I mean, what if the industry could start with call me now? I, I, I'm down for it. We should, we should look into that. We do that. We yeah. do text me now, but yes, yeah, so yeah, call well, me now. You, you know what? Down. We should collaborate on that. Um, call me now. But you know, but, the, but it's a communication strategy. That's what it is. I, yeah. I think what it is, it's, it's respecting the customer's time. And look, we respect the customer a lot. We spend a lot of time in developing out experience for the customer. We spend millions of dollars building this Taj Mahals yes. of, uh, of experience. And then my first impression of you is a CRM is autoresponder. Thing, yeah. Um, but but it, it's it's I think one of the biggest things that our industry can do can el to elevate the the experience is our communication strategies. We talk about marketing strategies. We talk a little bit about website strategies. Now communication. Strategies. Uh, now I do wonder, Chase, if there's another group of 
two people at, let's say, a hospitality conference saying the same thing. Because oh, yeah, our industry, yeah. I think there yeah. are other industries that have similar problems. That's true. And maybe, I, it's, but, maybe it's a tough love in me. Sometimes it comes out because I was a dealer. I'm just like, yeah, I just but I, I yeah. And, <laughs> and I will say, though, you asked about auto industry. Like, there's just a lot of fun. There's great work to do. And mm-hmm. that is what keeps me going. And whatever anyone in this industry learns, right, as people in their careers, what you learn in our industry is going to be useful in many other industries. So yes. whether you stay in auto or go elsewhere, what you learn and, and being part of this transformation that's happening is going to help every anywhere you go. Yes. Even healthcare. I mean, even travel and hospitality, it's all going to apply. So, yeah, we're doing some cool stuff. In oh, our- you know, it, it is fun. And you know what? Uh, I've had the opportunity to interview some amazingly progressive dealers and dealer groups. And, yeah. you know, um, they're executing this now. You know, um, I still think kind of the majority of our industries needs to play a little catch up. But I think this is the time we have this reset moment. Exactly. All right. That it's like, yeah, this is when you do it. But kind of going back to everything we've talked about, it all starts with process. Absolutely. Yes. It's and, good stuff, man. And and this industry has beautiful cars like this. I mean, healthcare yeah. has, you know, it's seats sexy. that you sit on this is, and, this is sexy and sexy. visit your doctor. I mean, this is great. <laughs> well, we look, have we haven't been able to go that fast. No. We're on the strip. So that is, yes. <laughs> We should go on the freeway, I, yes, I find, <laughs> but then I, I, we can't be we can't be live. We can't be doing this podcast. Yeah, live, we, we, so. there's a little G-force screen over here, and I'm always yeah. I'm like, what are what it would take to get to a full G? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, we have too too short of a frame to do it. But anyway, Vegas doesn't get old until day three. Yes, right. It's okay. always like a refresh. I'm so excited to be here, um, and uh, and and then you you sort of have that moment where you have to go back. You definitely it's do. It's a love hate. Uh, I, I, yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, look, this has been an amazing conversation. Yeah, and thanks for I, this ride. This I is can't, cool. I can't thank you enough for taking the time to come jam with me. Uh, but before I drop you off and let you go, <laughs> all right, uh, for everybody out there that's watching and listening who would like to connect, you learn some more about Orby or even just kind of follow along with the journey, uh, what's the best way to do so? You know what? Uh, Orby.com. Or, we are not SEO friendly because you will see those balls. You know those <laughs> balls that kids play with so you will see that if you search for us just it's orbee.com but really reach out to me on linkedin find me i'm always open for conversation uh and love learning i mean i learn from dealers all the time there's always new scenarios new business models Mm -hmm. uh that that you hear about dealers that have been here for a hundred years you know and and others who are trying new things and uh, used car only. I mean, it's just fantastic learning it about this so stuff. Much fun. Yeah. And then spending time with vendors. I mean, even at this event, you go from as a vendor that's walking the halls. What mm-hmm. do you do? You talk to all the vendors. Yeah. And you say, you know, how can we work together? How can well, we bring BDC training to that this? That theme is definitely like the parent here. Like I'm feeling higher level of collaboration than I think I have before. And maybe it's because we are going through kind of this reinvent or you know yeah kind of age but no I'm, I'm i'm with you and i love seeing that by the way i've seen more and more of that in the last few years well it's very cool man. man thanks for doing this, this and by the so way your stuff is awesome i mean you <laughs> you know how to make great content and uh you know it's it's great thanks man it's great thanks for tuning in to the strategy with jason podcast with your host jason harris don't want to miss new content be sure to check out the full podcast library at strategywithjason.com to stay in the know remember to like comment and subscribe happy podcasting